All aboard! Next stop, Chicago Junction! Yes, it's Chicago Junction, the radio program that's all about trains. Anything to do with railroading model, legendary or real. Now here's our boss, the head of the Windy City Hometown Radio Network, as well as being the chief electrical engineer, Mr. John DeVita. Well, thank you, Bry. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Chicago Junction from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network and on Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich on Thursday, January the 29th. Today the panel will be talking about railroads and model railroads. And now to start today's broadcast, here is our announcer, Mr. Brian. Ah, oh, thank you very much, John. And here is our host with the most, Mr. Jack Red Ryan. Thank you, Brian Valu. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen, everyone for showing up in this lovely Midwinter's Day, and it certainly is out there. And this is the 28th of January, in the year of our Lord, 19, no, no, I'm sorry, 2015. I was making a World War One era for a minute there. Uh, that's a little before all of our times, even John's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I know you're World War Two. Well, I'm, post, I'm, the, I'm one of the boomers, one of the first batch. But anyway, uh, our, our panel is here today. We're in almost full force. Uh, Tom McKenna is absent. He's suffered a cracked rib and uh, a slip on the ice. And uh, don't be telling him any jokes or anything lately. He'll be laughing and he'll be hurting himself. And he's got to get better. There's no only way to get better is to wait with something like that. They can't cast your midsection, right? Can they? I don't know. They Anybody can, know uh, about that? They can uh, bind you up. Ooh, sounds terrible. Sounds kinky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. I guess whatever floats your boat. <laughs> yeah, a little S and M there, B and D. As, as our panel, we'll start to my left. Doug, Doug Kenyuk. Howdy. And what is your uh, background in railroad? Uh, I'm with the short, uh, Railroad and Short Lines Club of Chicago. We meet every third Friday. Next meeting's February 20th at 7:30. We specialize in trains and Chicago area short lines. And the short lines is what the local radio, right? Yeah. The lo uh, local radio, ro railroad. And the, uh, local lo railroads. <laughs> you start at 7.30, though. 7.30 p.m. So the at, at Union Station. At the cl oh, the clocks is 7.30. It's really after 10. <laughs> Looks like Lulu's been repairing it again. Next up, Brian. Brian Valu. Brian Valu. Well, and uh, Happy New Year to you. Happy, happy uh, uh, hello. Yeah. Today's the it 28th, is, not the 20th. Yeah, I know. I, somebody the other day said it was still December. I said, hey. There you go. But, uh, yeah, um, I like trains. I'm, I'm a foamer rail fan. and uh, But I do belong to a few organizations, uh, the Chicago Chapter NRHS, uh, the Chicago Area Garden Railway Society, uh, or just to name a couple. You know, I can go down south to the Cincinnati Railroad Club, Cincinnati Cinder Sniffers. Now, NRHS, National Railroad Historical Society? That is correct. Okay, just wanted to make that. Uh, I'm not sure myself because, I mean, listen to me. I, I'm the biggest amateur here. These guys, they're like a combination of uh, uh, John Henry, uh, Casey Jones, and Cornelius Vanderbilt, all rolled into one. Well, no, no Vanderbilt money, though. <laughs> right? Definitely no money. <laughs> money. Um, and, yes, uh, I'm uh, retired from the uh, Navy and uh, Railroad. I was a locomotive engineer and conductor. Very good. Not, a, not an electrical engineer, a, local, a real engineer, right? Yes, a locomotive engineer. Yeah. Next up. And next okay. up will yeah. be my uh, teacher. To my left. <laughs> Dave Daruska. And let's hear about here, you. Let's see. Retired locomotive engineer from a number of different railroads, uh, diesel and electric. So I guess that makes me a locomotive engineer slash motor man. <laughs> no coal? No coal. No coal. But I work with a bunch of guys that shoveled coal on the railroad. 
Those are the guys that trained me when I started out. Uh, belong to the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society, Chicago chapter, uh, Blackhawk chapter of the National Railway Historical Society. Uh, I have a blog called uh, Player with Railroads, which I do uh, railroad history. And uh, also I, d I do this show, which keeps me busy. What's the name of the blog again? Uh, the blog's, ca the blog's called Player with Railroads. If you just type it in the uh, search, Player with Railroads. It's Player like with Railroads. With Railroads. Yeah, okay. it's a takeoff on the uh, on the poem, Chicago. And uh, also run uh, our Facebook page for Chicago Junction. Post a lot of stuff on there. So I'm busy in my retirement. Well, that's the best way to be. It is. <laughs> Wouldn't want to see you just with the rocking chair. <laughs> <laughs> Those are in the garage. <laughs> Everybody's a retiree, but uh, professor here, right? Yep. You, you Not know? yet. Not yet? Not yet. Okay. All right. Thank you. And uh, to my right, Kevin Barry, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm a retired sergeant from the Chicago PD and a member of the uh, Chicago Land Lionel Railroad Club. And... Uh, like Brian, I'm, I'm a foamer. I'm a rail fan, have been. I've also had the opportunity to get out on a couple of uh, excursion trips. Okay, funny you should mention, you had mentioned we, uh, I had contacted, and I thank Larry Sillo from the 20th Century Railroad Club for the help he gave us. Uh, they couldn't give us someone to call in today uh, because they are in the process of putting together their itinerary and catalog for this year and in, in the final stages that everybody is just working uh, constantly with us. They couldn't spare us the time, but we will try to contact them again for next month. But can you tell us a little bit about uh, Rail, uh, 20th Century Club, uh, Kevin? All right. They are a group of railroad enthusiasts who actively uh, set up and operate excursion trips uh, their catalog for last year, I believe, had somewhere between 12 and 15 trips to different locations spread out across the calendar year. The next one that they have coming up is in mid-March. It's the 12th through the 14th. Uh, they will leave Chicago on an Amtrak train, go to Grand Rapids, Michigan, switch over to a chartered motor coach, Go to Owasso, which is the uh, where the 1225 Pair Marquette is home based, and anybody who has children or grandchildren has almost seen the 1225 because it was the template for the Polar Express, and there'll be an excursion on the 1225 and then they'll spend an evening in one of the local hotels and then come back on the 14th. And they would contact the 20th Century Railroad Club for that. And uh, we don't have the number in front of us. I did have it, and I was looking at it. I can't remember what it was. However, like everything else, you put it on that old Google and you're gonna find it right away. They, they, uh, they do some outstanding trips. Uh, I want to say about 10 years ago, I did one with them. Uh, trains to planes up to Oshkosh for the fly-in. So, I mean, two of my great loves in, in three of my great loves in one afternoon because I took my wife with me. So it was trains and World War II aircraft and my bride. And uh, you know, it was a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. Plenty of stuff to see and take photos of. It was just a great trip. Very good. Yeah, I, I saw the listing. They do have what, eight, ten or twelve uh, coming up yet. You know, so ten or twelve. Yeah, they've got. They've uh, well, uh, we we're a couple of months past it, but I know they had at least two fall colors trips that they did just to go out and see the leaves changing. And it, it's hard to hard to compete with what you're going to see going cross country. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was course. That was last fall. Yeah, they do the fall trips then, right? They, yeah, all year long. Yeah, all year. Okay, what do we got? Anybody got any? Who wants to be first? Let's go. All right. Dave, Dave? No? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Metro News, Metro News. Uh, Metro just purchased three F-59 PH locomotives from Go Transit. 
to uh, supplement their motive power fleet. Um, they, uh, I don't know if they've made it back, made it to Chicago yet or not, but uh, they're they're different than what Metro's using right now. They they look a lot more like the F uh, forty C locomotives that Metro used to use. They still have one. They're uh, four wheel trucks. They're not the six wheel, but they're uh, something different. Also, they're going to start rebuilding their MP thirty six PH three S locomotives. And the rebuilding program is going to take place in, hooray, Chicago ah. at the Rock Island Rocket House 47th Street Shops, which is quite a change from what they were doing previously, which was sending it down to Hillbilly Rebuild at the Progress Rail. And the product they were getting back was uh, just absolutely god-awful. I heard nothing but complaints from Was it that be 47th and Wentworth right off the Ryan? Is that yeah, what that is? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. The old, that's the old Rocket House. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Metra's, uh, one of their rebuild shops. I mm -hmm. think it's their, their, probably their primary heavy rebuild for the diesels. Uh, there is also the Western Avenue shop, but I think that's more of a servicing shop and light rebuilding. Also, uh, Joliet uh, Station, uh, the, the original Joliet Station is no longer a train stop. They've uh, opened up a new station for both the Heritage and the Am Amtrak and the Metro Rock Island train, so they no longer cross over to the Joliet station. They stop east of the station. The station is now wholly owned by the city of Joliet, and they're going to convert that into a tourist destination. Uh, let's see. Amtrak. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with Amtrak. Amtrak organized a panel to study Chicago rail gridlock. Amtrak is establishing the Chicago Gateway Initiative a blue ribbon panel of rail and transportation leaders that will address the rail congestion in and around Chicago that's causing major delays for Amtrak and freight trains. I imagine this is also uh, locks in with the CREATE program where the uh, different freight railroads work together with uh, the commuter with Amtrak and with Metra to try to resolve some of the congestion issues here in Chicago. Um, See, Indiana was uh, negotiating with a company called Corridor Capital to run their Hoosier State. Uh, those uh, negotiations have since ended, and they are no longer considering Corridor Capital as a provider for the service. I think it's going to go back to Amtrak, which has been running it now. There was some issues about what Amtrak was, was doing, and uh, they were promised by Capital Corridor to do a lot more. But it seems Capital Quarter did not come up with uh, what they wanted. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. No, uh, in, in that vein, yeah. I thought uh, Indiana was going to try and court uh, Iowa Pacific to do it. Uh, I th actually, it's Iowa. Iowa's going to be doing. Let's see the. Sh the let's see. Uh, what do you got here? Oh, Iowa Pacific just purchased uh, some GP forty. FH2s from New Jersey Transit, and they're supposedly going to take over the Hoosier State from Amtrak. Uh, that's supposed to be up at the end of the month. Their uh, Amtrak's contract has a January 31st, so I, that's that's something to watch. And I'll throw it off to somebody else. Uh, I may have some more stuff. I have a book review mm. a little bit later. Okay. Well, uh, Brian, sir. Yes, we got the Midcontinent Railway Museum. Uh, and uh, up in North Freedom, uh, Wisconsin, on February 14th and 15th, they're going to have a snow train. This is uh, an annual thing that they've been doing, running whether they have snow or not. And this year, we'll be using steam. They finally got uh, one of their steam locomotives uh, running, the Saginaw one. Um, a uh, two, uh, 262. We'll be pulling the passenger. And then on the 21st and 22nd, there's going to be an open house in Middleton, Wisconsin, is where they're rebuilding C&W 1385. And this way the people will be allowed in to see the progress they've been doing on the rebuilding. Um, it's a passenger engine used in commuter service. It's a 10-wheeler, a 4.60, coal burner. And for a while there, towards... C&W was using it uh, for special events and trains. Yeah, it pulled the circus train, didn't it? Yeah, it pulled the circus train, I think, in 85. 
when they did uh, when CNW still pulled the circus train in New York. Uh, that's going on. And then um, our friends at the uh, Groman Museum up in Milwaukee oh. uh, o- opened a new exhibit January 16th. Uh, the museum's located on the grounds of the um, of the uh, Milwaukee School of Engineering. Uh, they put this uh, wonderful museum together, a museum dedicated to, uh, to men at work is what, what the whole theme is. And they've got paintings going back to the 1500s of what industry was going on then. Uh, textiles, even thrashing, early shipbuilding, mining and such. Uh, it is an interesting muse- museum to go visit. And we talked about it last year when they ran an exhibit of uh, photography for Owen Winston Link. I remember that. Now, you've been there, correct? Yes. Now, would they, by chance, have any a lot of that, uh, you know, that New Deal art that always showed uh, industrious people doing various uh, jobs and, you know, n- no? No, not really. I not really. A lot of uh, European paintings. Most of, most of it was European. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you get a lot of early Europe industrial age. Um, but they've had some wonderful sculptures there of people. In fact, the building itself, instead of having gargoyles around it, it's got nine statues, bronze statues, reproduced from ones that were foot and a half high to nine foot tall going around the roof of the building. And they actually have a, a garden up there. Yeah, great place. Uh, and it, it just, just gorgeous. Stained glass was made for it. Mm-hmm. But uh, as I was saying, they're opening a new one called... Uh, on the Milwaukee Road. It's called The Art of the Milwaukee Road. The Art? The Art of the Milwaukee Road. And what they did, they got not only from their collection, they got went to uh, the public Milwaukee Public Library. Um, they got paintings, prints, maps. A uh, time when railways in the Milwaukee Road formed actually the backbone of uh, regional travel, national industry. So you have images of the Hiawatha. There's a photo essay about working the Milwaukee Road shops. Um, so it, it, you know, it offers a glimpse into the art and imagery of the railroads in uh, Milwaukee. Um, the exhibit is going to run through April 26th. And admission is really, really good. Five bucks. Not too far from the Amtrak station either. No, it's not that far. It's a nice little walk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uphill. <laughs> <laughs> but um, parking, if you drive, is free. You're right on the museum campus. Mm-hmm. And, in fact, the docents at the museum are all students of the museum. Um, it's really, really worth going to see. Would well, they maybe have a, you know, a... Sampling of uh, advertising art they had, or two, or no? Oh yes, yeah. that's that goes with the, that goes with the art. I imagine a lot of uh, oh, yeah, advertising it. of the posters, yeah. artwork for the uh, uh, hopefully for the uh, the dinnerware that they use. Mm-hmm. They use several different styles uh, in glassware, uh, plus you know the interior of the trains and everything. Mm-hmm. Maybe, hopefully, they'll have some of the artwork of Otto Cooler, who designed <coughs> the uh, Hiawathas. A lot of people don't seem to realize it, but uh, as far as painting goes, an awful lot of the famous painting were, were generated because of advertising art, like the Mona Lisa, for example, that was a, uh, done for uh, Playtex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Da Vinci didn't get the royalties for it. <laughs> My cup runneth over. But it sounds like uh, you can tell we're very chauvinistic here. We've got to have a female member here, right? Yes. Any, anyone would like to apply, right? Oh, definitely. Apply. Or many, many of yous. And <laughs> many of yous. Another exhibit that's open now yeah. is at the Morton Arboretum. Um, normally during the Christmas holidays, Morton Arboretum had a train running there, and the train setup was by from the LGB Club of Chicago big train club Mm -hmm. and they're now running through February uh, 
trains on uh, Railroad of Enchantment or the Enchantment Railroad. And so they have all the large scale trains running through the forest uh, garden setting. And nine dollars to get in. How much to get out? Uh, <laughs> six bucks for kids. <laughs> and it goes till four in the afternoon. Huh. If you uh, leave your kids you get a six dollar rebate. Nine to four. You go in and uh, watch the trains run and everything. And every then and then you might see a couple of club members. You'll see a couple of club members. They're there to answer questions for right. you. So, Is that uh, the same group that does the uh, biological gardens or no? No. Different group? Yep. Okay. Any, any time no, see, the Botanic oh. Garden of, of Chicago is all private and, and done. Their own people are there. And Morton is what through a grant from the Morton company family from yeah the, yeah and and they, they go there, uh, they get a small stipend for putting up uh, what they do, mm -hmm. but it goes through uh, February twenty second. Any of these shows we've ever been at it, it's like uh, it's you say the volunteer the 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 the, uh, the aficionado who's in it the amateur for the love of it they're the most friendly and helpful you can find I mean it, it oh yeah I mean and you gotta look. The GGH Garden Railroad, Garden Railroading, before the 70s, was basically a European thing. And there were a few in, in, in the United States, but not as grandiose as you see today. And with the introduction that LGB did of the Garden, the G-Gage itself in 68, and after it caught on, finally started coming to the United States in the late 70s, all of a sudden, it was also the same time there was a big boon in toy trains. I mean, they're colorful, they're big, and they, they were actually introduced because a lot of the old people working at Lehman in, in Nuremberg remembered their Christmases were the you know, big trains for little hands. And it actually came to boot, and not only came to boon f for garden railroading in, in this gauge, but also for Lionel, America Flyer, mm -hmm. uh, gave a total rebirth. Now you say Nuremberg was where? Germany? Germany. So it was probably big trains for little Hans. Right? It could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. There are Fritz, too. Layman <laughs> at that time was over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. their, one of their claims of fame was all the tin toys that they made. Um, unfortunately, they went bankrupt, but Merklin took over. Merklin, a company bought Merklin, or Marklin, as some people say, famous for their toy trains. Mm -hmm. And uh, they bought LGB, and it's being marketed. It's A lot of the molds were taken out of China. They're back in Europe, and they're being made where they should be. Where? In Germany and Hungary. Very good. And they're making quite a comeback. The more things stay, the, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Isn't that, that correct? That is true. Yeah. So what you think is new is not new at all. Sometimes. That, that's right. Yeah. Doug? Huh? No, Doug, you're next. No. Not this time. Oh, he's, he's, he's deferring. Would you like to come up, Kevin? Yes, okay. Talk yeah. about home? Uh, <laughs> January 22nd, just last week, the CTA officially retired its 2400 series L cars. Now, you remember them as the uh, wide striped red, red over the narrow white over the wide striped blue on the side, and the end panels one red and one blue. They were originally made in between 1976 and 1978 locally by the Boeing Company. And uh, they made their final uh, appearance as an eight-car train on the, uh, oh, Lord, downtown on the, the red, the brown, and the green line. And a lot, of, a lot of people surprisingly came out to take photos. But uh, those are officially retired now. And... Uh, the CTA is waiting for the uh, delivery 
of the, the last. They're waiting for 100 cars in the 5000 series. And when that is completed, uh, they will move on to what will be the 7000 series. And they'll replace the cars in the 2600 series. But that's not uh, scheduled for another four years. They're saying 2017 or 2018. And we'll see if that comes off on time. But uh, Those are dog years or human years? Human. Human. The, the neat thing about the retirement on a 2400 series cars, they had all the original markings on them. They found all the original advertising and put it back up on the headboards inside the cars. So if you, if you did get on a train, uh, you step back almost 40 years in a time warp. So uh, they even found the original CTA uniforms for the operators. Yes, they the the fair. The They're still wearing them. No, they had the the conductor was in the in the old old CTA uniform, the the gray mm -hmm. blue hat, the the gray leather jacket. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember if he had a, a the the change machine on his belt anymore. Uh, I thought that was the cop. Be nice. In spite of yourself, I can say that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it was like a giant step backwards. No, that was like there was a uniform before that was a dark blue. Does anyone remember that? I remember my uncle drove one time uh, the the bus line on Damon Avenue. He loved the the run. The run. It was forty seventh to eighty seventh. It was all residential, but it was blue. Uh, then like almost like a police uniform. It's hard to tell apart. Then they went to that gray, which you're talking about. And we forgot about it. But that was on the south side, the Confederate side of town, right? Oh. Hello, oh. John. Anyway. Okay, anything else? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. You, you've completely blown me out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah, up? I got more stuff. I got more stuff. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Canadian Pacific is suing with the state of Wisconsin for $500,000 for track improvements that they made for the proposed Wisconsin high-speed rail that Governor Walker put the kibosh on. Uh, remember the, uh, mm -hmm. the the famous Acela trains and everything? Not Acela, but the... Uh, Talgo. Talgo. The Talgo. Talgo? Yeah. Talgo. 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 <laughs> the Talgo trains hmm. uh, that uh, <laughs> sat sat in Milwaukee for ages. I think the, I think somebody finally bought them. They got them down in Beach Grove right now. Oh, okay. They're in Beach Grove. All right. Where's that? Beach Grove, uh, Indiana. Indiana. Oh. It's a, oh, yeah. Amtrak's uh, one of their shops. I guess it's their major shop. Yeah, major shop. Ex New York Central. Right. Right. Uh, in in uh, Steam News, the Illinois Rail Museum Frisco 1630 is back up and running. So expect it to be running this summer. Yay. So they'll have steam back at the museum. Uh, in the. 2015 budget for Metra includes $3 million to replace the 16th Street interlocking. That's the uh, St. Charles interlocking, and anybody that takes the Rock Island train will uh, certainly remember the decrepit tower that stands at 16th Street that always looks like it's falling down and has almost been knocked down by a few derailments, but... <laughs> no such luck, huh? No such luck. <laughs> Great story. They had a... a I see coal train going through that derailed, and the tower operator took off like a bat out of hell. He thought the cars were coming through the tower. Uh, anyways, the current 16th Street interlocking is an obsolete manual interlocking consisting of two outdated hand lever machines built in 1901 and 1929. There are no manufacturers of spare parts or replacement equipment for these lever machines. Hmm. Metro also urges support for the 75th Street Corridor Improvement Project. That is the project that would shift the Southwest service trains from Union Station to the Rock Island and South Street Station. That has a price tag of one billion dollars. So one billion with a one B? billion. Yep. Oh, it's got a hell of an elevated line. <laughs> you got to build. <laughs> yeah. The one billion project would aim, which aims to untangle a knot of railroad tracks on the south side of Chicago, that causes significant delays for Metro, Amtrak, and several freight railroads. The resolution noted that the project will support greatly increased efficiency in Metro's commuter rail operations, Amtrak's inner city services, and freight movements through the Chicago. Time out. 
You are listening to Chicago Junction on Jack FM 89.7, WRHS FM Norge, and the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on Thursday, January the 29th, the year 2015. And you are tuned to Jack FM 89.7, WRHS FM Norwich, Illinois. Wow. And now, back to our panel and Chicago Junction. Couldn't even see your lips move, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> FRA Zabo is headed back to Chicago to focus on local transportation issues. Everybody's friend, <laughs> Joe Zabo, will be stepping down from the post he has held since April 2009 and effective January 1st, 2015, will be on the staff of the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, CMAP. Effectively, effectively, <laughs> effectively, effectively returning to his Chicagoland roots. Uh, so, those uh, of us who worked on the Metro Electric District are very familiar with Conductor Joe Zabo, yeah. who always worked once a year <laughs> to keep his railroad retirement. So, so now he won't have to be looking for a night watchman job anywhere. Is that no, it? no, this guy will never look for a night watchman job. Trust me. Oh God, he, he was the mayor of Riverdale for ages. Oh, oh. Oh, that's where uh, Archie and Jughead live, isn't it? Yeah, right. Yeah, Zabo is expected to focus on working with elected officials and the railroad industry to help expedite and increase funding for infrastructure projects that are aimed at easing congestion involving freight carriers, Metra, and South Shore commuter trains and Amtrak inner city trains. So how, we how, have we have a, an ace back home. <laughs> how esoteric. How esoteric, yeah. Uh, you so, uh, mentioned the... Uh, 1630 yeah. up at uh, up at Union. Does yes. it still have a Russian accent? <laughs> I don't know. What the 1630 that? had originally been ordered by Nicholas Tsar of all the Russias uh, prior to his untimely demise. And uh, Baldwin didn't send him. Baldwin, hmm. Baldwin was told by the U.S. government that they could not send them. That is correct. And it went to the Frisco. Well, I went to Frisco. Out of it, there was like 20 railroads that picked up at least four decapods of the Russian variety. Yeah, and because it was designed for the Russian Imperial Rail, it has to have uh, boots on the on the drive wheels because the Russian Imperial is set at five foot between. The, the crown of the track instead of four foot eight and a half like the American rail. It's it's a fun train to ride and most people, whether they've been to the museum or not, have seen it because it was in a background mm -hmm. shot in the movie A League of Their Own. That is correct. Mm. And it was much much more interesting than the than the characters that were seen in the mm. foreground. <laughs> the uh well it's it's you know you, like you said he put a boot on what it just put a bigger tire on so it turned out to be the cheapest way to by retiring it with wider tires to then regaging the whole wheel and the boots is what because of all the snow in russia is that it <laughs> yes yeah. no the, the it's no what it is tire fur, fur instead boots of, <laughs> instead of that wide the tire is that wide a little more air <laughs> but you know new england patriots we have to describe now that brian was holding his fingers a little <laughs> further apart <laughs> for those of you watching on the uh, listening on the radio instead of the television for those on the television quit watching <laughs> we're not on there uh, it, 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 it's set for a wider gauge rail and it keeps it was done intentionally keep trains that were meant to operate in Europe, in, a, in in essence, German trains from operating on Russian track. It's the same reason that the uh, Orient Express stops stops in in Switzerland and gets a different set of trucks underneath it as it continues on past Switzerland to go from one set of rail width to a wider set of rail width. I think that's done in Siberia as well. There's a difference in gauge in Siberia. Where they actually have a whole setup where they change the actually change the uh, the trucks on the cars themselves. I think you mixed up your trains. The Venice Simple on Orient Express does not change trucks. Mm -hmm. Ruh -ruh. 
I stand corrected. It, it, no, it ran from it ran all the way to Istanbul from Paris. Hmm. And and they stayed on the standard gauge all the way. Hmm. Okay. Sorry. <sighs> that was but, that the rail difference was done in Pittsburgh and uh, uh Pittsburgh and Philadelphia when the interurban companies went in, Pennsylvania Railroad lobbied the uh the state government the uh, streetcars and interurbans were five foot two inch gauge, so they couldn't freight interchange and beat competition. We had the same thing with trains in the South, didn't we? Different gauge in, in, in the U.S. of A. Yeah, well, the U.S. Yeah, I mean Erie Railroad in the North was six foot. Uh, a lot of the rail gauge in the South was five foot, mm -hmm. and somehow standard gauge it became the norm. Actually, during the presidency of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Uh, during the War of the South, it became normal, and that's why uh, the big changes in track gauge occurred in the South. Well, well, Sherman took care of that, too. He tore up a lot of track. Well, he <laughs> tore up a lot. He made it easy for him. He just replaced when them. When they rebuilt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you referring to the infamous Sherman's bow ties? Yeah, right. And um, Peabody and Sherman. No. No, no. <laughs> no the, the other a Sherman. Yeah. We are marching mm. through Georgia, you mean? Yeah, yeah that's okay. the one. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. Union troops would uh, and start a big bonfire with, with the ties and heat the rail, and then mm. eight guys would pick them up and run them around a tree. And in one day, the Louisville and Nashville set the record uh, doing over, four, uh, over what is it? No, it was like 11,000 miles track was all changed. In one in one day, whoa! Well, they they you know they cheated to get there, so. <laughs> <laughs> but then a lot of people that actually f worked for the railroad for at least one day, actually for a week preparing for it. In fact, locomotives were in the shops being changed mm -hmm. like that, and doing it the same way, putting bigger tires on, so they could run on. Uh, but there was a lot of three rail track. <laughs> no, what, year, what would this spin on? What year was this now? Uh, a, uh, 1866. Hmm. Right after the yeah. first Reconstruction. Between right? 65 and 68, all the rail changed, basically. So it got standardized. Yes. So, so Los Estados Unidos. Unidos. <laughs> si. Si. CSX reopens locomotive repair shop at Bar Yard. Um, oh, cool. The CSX Corporation has reopened its Chicago locomotive shop at Bar Yard in Riverdale, Illinois. The historic Baltimore and Ohio Chicago Terminal Facility, which had been shut down in 1992, reopened following significant upgrades. The new shop will improve operational efficiency throughout the western and northern segments of the Class 1's network. It's part of a $4.5 million project. CSX renovated the existing facility, uh, which now features a refurbished turntable. A new drop table and new cranes. So that's good news. And they uh, are employing two, 23 new workers in the process. Ah. Norfolk Southern uh, just rolled out two new uh, ecologically friendly locomotives, the GP33 ECO, of which they eventually will have 25 in total. And one of them will be uh, in the Chicago region. Uh, funded by the Chicago Metropolitan Agency and the Illinois EPA. No partial funding for that project. So, a cleaner locomotive. I don't know if the locomotive fumes smell like lavender or what, but or maybe, maybe, they, maybe they're using uh, used cooking oil and it smells like french fries. There you go. Ah, yeah. it's <laughs> lemon fresh. <laughs> what would the fuel be? It'll st it'll still be diesel. But I guess they're improving the uh, efficiency of the, of the engine so that there's fewer emissions. Right, right. Oh, yeah. The one, one, one of the, I understand, like with our own gasoline, we got these different formulas to be less polluting. Yet, they're not as efficient for mileage. So what are you really gaining if you're using more gasoline? And, you know what I'm saying? No. You, you, <laughs> either way it goes, they're making a profit. Yeah, right. Hmm. Mm. Is that what it's all about? Follow the money trail? Hey, there you go. Oh, I didn't think of that. Guess new book. Why. We got a new book out. Chicago, America's Railroad Capital, The Illustrated History, hmm. 1836 to today. Excellent book. Excellent book. Wonderful pictures. Hey, look at that. It's the 16th Street Tower. 
<laughs> getting ready to fall down. You're right. It does look like it's going to fall over. <laughs> it doesn't really look like a tower, they though. Even, they even used a piece of one of the tra track improvement signs with the funding signs to cover up one of the windows. So <laughs> <laughs> never put it past Metro to uh, to not be resourceful. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, it's really well, a great book. Very uh, utilitarian. It has excellent Chicago Railway history chapter by Michael Blasek. So if you ever want to know everything about every Chicago railroad that ever existed and how they all merged together. Mm -hmm. um, excellent history. A lot of, lot of good pictures. A lot of train pictures. Is Chicago Junction Railroad in there by any chance? Or? Yeah, the CJ is in here. No, that was my uh, grandfather's railroad, and uh, we worked for it. My uncle John worked for it. My cousin Jack worked for it. Mm -hmm. We used to go on our picnic every summer. That's why we got the, num the name here. Well, when was the book published? Uh, Today. <laughs> Today, <laughs> yeah. Just recently, because I, uh, somebody yeah. at Voyager Press, which I believe is not in the United States, was printed outside of the United States, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. I don't see the... Mm -hmm. They don't really have a... In the, uh, oh, here we go. Published 2014. Oh. Uh, they're out of Minis Minneapolis, but I believe it was printed in England. All right. Also, go to our friendly neighborhood bookstore and... And pick it up. Yeah, I actually got this online, and mm -hmm. uh, it, that's probably the easiest way to get it. And they have a lot of, lot of, lot of pictures in here by many notable photographers. A lot of names that I recognize from uh, Flickr and Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they they cover the freight traffic, the the commute, the history, of the commuter traffic. Um, they cover railroad art, uh, Chicago's visual and historic legacy by John Gruber. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Lincoln Car? Yeah, Lincoln Car is in here. Yeah, I, like I say, it's just really a fabulous book. I can't say enough about it. Which is almost finished. Chicago's at least the, the exterior the title, of. The title is Lincoln, what, Chicago, America's, America's Railroad Capital and mm -hmm. Illustrated History, 1836 to Today. That's probably one reason why there's congestion here, all these crisscrossing lines, you know. Oh, yeah, that's it. Sure. You we had all these competing railroads. We just figured it out. <laughs> Don't well, have to have that commission anymore. One of the things they do talk about is, is how each railroad came into the city and how they had to, uh, you know, the earliest ones, of course, lorded over their right-of-ways and uh, tried to prevent any, every other railroad from building into the city. So some of the railroads had very circuitous routes to get into the city. The Baltimore and Ohio and uh, one in particular, which traveled a very, very strange route to get into the uh, Grand Central Station downtown. Like what? What was that like? Oh, it came in from the east. It went through uh, Gresham. Mm -hmm. Through uh, was it Gresham? Yeah, through through Gresham uh, over Rock Island. Kind of shared the Rock Island suburban trackage for a short way, and then it uh, followed the Panhandle line along the the western edge, uh, just west of Western Avenue. Until it got to uh, where the where the Penzi would travel east towards Union Station, it's really goofy. Uh, you know, the the B and O used Grand Central for a long time, and when they stopped, they actually switched over to the Northwestern Station for yeah, a short time. Yeah, I remember seeing the last trains there. Yeah. So, I guess say best great great book, uh, highly recommended. And uh, coming up. Um, for the Center for Railroad Photography and Art, which I highly encourage. If you're interested in railroad photography and advertising art or any kind of art, a wonderful organization out of uh, Madison, Wisconsin. John Gruber started it. Uh, currently the president and executive director is Scott, Scott Loathes. They're having their annual conference, uh, the 2015 conference, April 10th through the 12th in Lake Forest, Illinois at Lake Forest College. And... Uh, if you're interested in going, it's a three-day affair. You can either get tickets for all three days or tickets for the Saturday only, which is the the main day with all the uh, speakers. Friday's usually a dinner with a, a speaker, and then Sunday they have workshops. Mm -hmm. And uh, they say, get order your tickets now <laughs> because they go fast. Last year, I guess it was sold out, mm -hmm. and they had to turn people down. I don't have the pricing information here, but... Uh, you can, oh, here it is. Uh, the weekend package, uh, $250 if you're not a member. Um, Saturday and Sunday is $180. And if you're a student, it's $125 and $65. 
doesn't look like they're offering a Saturday only. You get Saturday and Sunday together. So they're, they are at uh, Rail Photo, R A I L P H O T O hyphen art, A R T dot org. Hmm. And uh, if you go to that site, you'll also see some of the, the projects they've been working on. They, they're part of the uh, Jack Delano exhibit at the uh, Chicago History Museum, which has been running and will run for the rest of the year. And Jack Delano was a photographer for the Farm Services Association, and he uh, went around the Chicago area. He went around the country, actually, but uh, a lot of photos from railroads in the Chicago area. It's a great exhibit. I highly recommend it. Now, for benefit of those who have find it hard to accept change, the Chicago History Museum, formerly known as the Historical Society, correct? But the Historical Society still runs the History Museum. It was probably a better marketing name to call it a History Museum for those visiting the city, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Yep. Want to vote on that one or what? <laughs> <laughs> Doug, are you the stenographer today or do you have anything to say? I have a, I have <laughs> a little thing about the uh, subway cars that uh, Boeing built. Okay. Boeing at that time saw a huge market because everybody was trying to build subways and stuff. So they decided to enter the subway market. They built the CTA cars. I believe they built the BART cars and a few other ones. And the only cars that were reliable were the ones built for the CTA. All the other ones had to be returned two or three times or have Boeing come out and make fixes to it. And that's because CTA's quality control is they get two cars and they put them on the system and run them for about a week to shake out any bugs and then go back and say, here's a bug, go fix it, or here's a problem, go fix it. And then they get it back and they run them again and they go through a six-month quality assurance cycle and then they say, okay, now go ahead and make them. Kind of like a test drive? Yeah. Yeah, that's what they did mm -hmm. with the 5,000s. Remember, they had the 5,000s and they had to pull them all off because they ran into problems. Hmm. And then and just have a similar problem now in Boston where they just purchased new locomotives and uh, they have bearing problems with them. So yep. they had to pull them all out of service and uh, redo the bearings. Yes. We mentioned before, and uh, I think I said it in jest, about how much to get on, how much to get off. That old song about Charlie and the... MTA. Kingston that Trio. Was, that was an actual political slogan, jar jingle, or what do you want to call it? Some Somebody in Boston, some politician, decided... He was, oh, we're not going to charge you more to ride the MTA. You didn't want to get on, but they were charging you to get off also. George, <laughs> George O'Brien. Well, he was the one to vote for, right? Yeah, vote for George O'Brien and you get know, Charlie off the you know, MTA. Did he, we're going to sing that now. Did he ever return? No, he never returned. And His fate is still unlearned. He'll he ride forever, ride forever, ride forever, ride forever, ride forever ride the streets of Boston. He's, he's the, the man, man who, who never, never returned. returned. Now, that is a beautiful song. It's just... Yeah, I like the fact that his wife came out with a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Passed it through the window as but the train the went rumbling hand through. Hand her a tuna as the train goes <laughs> rumbling hey, through. if she handed him a sandwich, could you hand him a quarter? <laughs> she was a wise woman. <laughs> <laughs> she had, yeah, there was nothing in that madness. <laughs> Happy marriage. Yeah, we, were in, we were in Boston. We went to a, uh, red, a couple of Red Sox games, and uh, we got out of the <laughs> out of Fenway, and uh, someone says, are oh, you looking for the, the tea? Uh, tea? What's this tea, you know, Boston Tea Party? The MTA they meant, but obviously, uh, I guess they looked like a Bostonian to them. Didn't sound like one, though. Next case. Yes. Well, Brian. we've got another show coming up at High Wheeler. Yeah. High Wheeler show at Harper College. A train show uh, on the campus uh, February 28th to March 1st. Um, considering those two days. <laughs> The end, the end of February, the beginning of March. Mm -hmm. And on the campus, it's in the uh, sports uh, building, sports and welfare. Uh, price to get in is $9. If you're a senior, it's 7 Kids uh, 5 through 12 are $2. 5 and under is free. Um, it has a lot of layouts, display layouts. Uh, there are vendors there. Uh, in fact, I will be there with three organizations uh, doing my duty. Uh, Midwest Rails, where we have a modular G-gauge layout that uh, we set up. Uh, the LGB Club will be there with uh, their floor layout. Um, I know there's O-gauge, there's O-gauge, there's Z-gauge, 
uh, one tea, tea at a beautiful ca- table, t- uh, coffee table with Z gauge in it. Uh, European uh, uh, layout uh, are, in fact, the head engineer from the Chicago Botanic Garden. He built a wonderful European layout using uh, Merklin track. And it looks like the Swiss Alps or mm. German countryside. The Lego um, guys are there, too. Lego is there. Um, just everything that's about trains, about railroading is there. Uh, the Several artists there. We've got book dealers there. Uh, Operation Lifesaver is there, which I'll be one of them. Mm-hmm. We usually give small lectures. Uh, the Chicago Area Garden Railway Society will be there uh, to talk and sign up new members along with us with the uh, Midwest Rails. LGB club. Um, for some reason, you guys don't come with your little layout. It's difficult to get people to, uh, you know, dedicate a weekend and, and breaking it down and putting it back together. They're more interested in running trains than, than moving about. Yeah, it's called promotion of the hobby. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Echelons that, above reality, sir. I just work in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that your association is what? What again, Kevin? The Chicagoland Lionel Railway Cl- Railroad Club, and the second Saturday in June, we will again be running the railroad railroading merit badge clinic for Boy Scouts in the Chicago area. Although we have young men traveling from Indiana, and we have had. A scout or two sneak down over the border from Wisconsin. And if you want more information, you can go to chicagobsa.org or you can go to info at clrctrains.com. And uh, it's an excellent opportunity for, for a Boy Scout to complete the railroading merit badge in one day. And the fee for the clinic includes feeding the scouts. And that happens to be my particular responsibility on that that day. And uh, I will not complain on that. <laughs> He's uh, and are you serving beaver? <laughs> no, no. F- feeding scouts is, I'm telling you, there's a bottomless pit there. You know, isn't, isn't it true? Uh, with no disrespect meant to scouts, when they get their feet on, they can make the biblical plague of locusts <laughs> look like short hitters. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay, and uh, Brian, once again, that's the uh, high roller, high wheelers. I'm sorry, high wheelers. H I or H I G H. H I G H W H E E L E R. Wheeler, like and, it's, and it's helped. It's held at Harper College, which is I know in Butler. What what town is that? You know, uh, Schaumburg. That's uh, Schaumburg. Okay. And yes, there are some good restaurants around there. Actually. Oh yes. When we have to make a run, we do it. Did, uh, okay, uh, High Wheelers show, and when the date again was? February 28th and March 1st. Okay, what happens to the 29th and 30th? It'll be a hell of a long show. <laughs> Closed until further notice. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where, where are those days? How come? There'll be okay. no Facebook service on that day, yeah, those right. days either. <laughs> no delivery of anything. They didn't come up with the with the right envelope and the politicians canceled those days okay and that is Harper College Schomburg February 28th March and 1st March 1st okay very good that's uh, more, more meetings more meetings coming up okay. uh, February 6th Blackhawk chapter of the NRHS uh, longtime Blackhawk chapter member Paul Burgess will be back uh, this month to share with us his Rail News 2014 happenings of interest across North Central Midwest and his Route 30 and the Union Pacific 24 days on the road to Salt Lake and the Blackhawk chapter meets at the uh, let's see the Gladys Fox Museum which is in uh, also known as the old Congregational Church southwest corner of 9th Street and Washington in historic Lockport Illinois February 8th, the Great Midwest Train Show, 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the DuPage County Fairgrounds, 2015 Manchester Road, Wheaton, Illinois, adult admission $7, children under 12 free. February 11th, the 20th Century Railroad Club meeting, 7 p.m. at the Electrician's 
Union Hall, 600 West Washington Boulevard, Chicago. Clayton Johnson from the Burlington Northern Santa Fe will be speaking on Metro Operations on the Burlington Corridor to Aurora. February 15th, the Peoria Train Show, if you want to go to Peoria, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Illinois Central College, Route 24, one mile east of Route 116, East Peoria. Adult admission, $3, children under 12 free. And then if you really want to travel, Madison, Wisconsin, February 21st and 22nd, the 48th annual Mad City Railroad Show and Sale, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Madison, Wisconsin, Alliant Energy Center Exhibition Hall. Uh, adult admission, $11. Ooh, pricey. Se- senior, 65 and older, $10. What a deal there. <laughs> <laughs> Children, 5 to 11, $5. Kids under 5, free. <laughs> that was the best line of the day. What a deal. You save a dollar. <laughs> God, it's great being a senior. <laughs> Probably get a lot of people lying just to save that dollar, huh? <laughs> yeah, really. What's a dollar now? I mean, you can't even buy a nickel candy bar for a dollar now. <laughs> Anyway, what uh, is that anybody else got something we got uh, we're getting close to the getting close to the end again the folks. Hour. Well, Brian mentioned uh, the German train manufacturer Merklin. That's correct. A couple of times and if anybody happens to watch the the show Grimm on NBC, mm. one of the main characters has a tremendous yes. Merklin train set that he puts out every every Christmas and it even if you, you don't believe in the premise of the show, it's worth watching it just to see that train set. It's beautiful. Yeah, you missed it on the holiday this year. No, it was in. It was in. I don't know. I say, if you didn't see the show around with, Christmas, you missed it. With with the three mis- mischievous little choir boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Darling children. <laughs> Somehow my, my, my wife made sure she taped that segment, kept the show for us. Usually she watches it and... And, and deletes it, but she kept it for me. Also, uh, you talk about your favorite uh, Indiana PBS station. They were running a show called Ultimate Restorations. Oh, yeah. um, they just finished it, and I hope they repeat it, because I caught it in the middle. And the show, the second show I watched was the restoration of the fishing game car for Wisconsin yep. at the uh, mm-hmm. uh, at the Midcontinent Railway Museum. Uh, excellent work, the showing how they they told the story how they got this car, s- stripped it out, and put coach seats in it because they needed coach seats, and decided, well, let's put it back to what it was. <laughs> yeah, and amazingly, what they did to restore this car. But the first episode, apparently. Which was taped about, I'd say, th- was taped three and a half years ago, because that's when they built, C- rebuilt Sierra Railroad Number Three. Uh, Sierra Railroad Number Three is famous, been in a lot of TV shows, Petticoat Junction. Uh, that is the railroad that was the movie railroad. Uh, a lot of, a lot of great westerns were filmed there. I uh, got a lot. I seen a lot of Forrest Tucker getting shot up and and. Uh, <laughs> Slim Pickens and Jack Elam, I suppose. Oh, probably he was one of the, you know, a lot of the movie villains. I mean, I just picked up a movie, Kansas Pacific. I think it was made in 58, 59 with uh, Sterling. uh, Hayden. Hayden. Or was it Sterling Holloway? Uh, Sterling. (laughs) No, not Sterling. That's, well, that's Stanley, isn't it? Uh, Sterling Holloway was Winnie the Pooh's voice, you know. Yeah, that's correct. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, Sterling Hayden, and if you listen to the bad guys, which was right at the beginning, you recognize the voice, but not recognize the face. What's the voice? Well, he was the one that said, hi ho, silver. If you put a mask on him, you wouldn't know who he was. Clayton, Clayton Moore? Moore? Clayton Moore. Hmm. And You're all this, uh, the, the show that you mentioned, we have a link to that on uh, on our Facebook page, the Chicago Junction Facebook page. I Whenever we get, whenever I find things like this, I at least try to put a link to the sh- to the program or to the website, mm-hmm. so you can actually go to their website and watch the programs. So yeah. if you miss them, oh. Ultimate Restorations mm-hmm. is Ultimate. being shown on Channel Eleven, uh, late afternoon on either Saturday or Sunday. Because I've mm-hmm. caught a couple of episodes. <clears throat> I I caught the one about the schooner they rebuilt. Oh yeah, and, and you thought I'm, that sucker was going to tip over, didn't you? Well, I'm going to have to find the one on the no, rail car. No, they relaunched it. But I'm looking forward to the one on the aircraft they're going to rebuild. Yeah. Yeah. 
see, it, it, that's in the first couple. And if you miss the first couple, it's rough. Hopefully we'll be able to get uh, – but the series itself is fascinating. And it's like anybody else, uh, you, the research, uh, the, even when they did the carousel I, I in just San Francisco. last Saturday. Mm-hmm. Doing the carousel in San Francisco is just really fascinating. And the, and the uh, pipe organ. If, if it's on PBS, you better believe it will be repeated somewhere along the line. And you also got Channel 11, Channel 20, and this channel, whatever it is, 21 well, or 17. Well, it was 56. Yeah, 56 or whatever it is. I don't know what dial. it's being rebroadcast on, but it's 56. Yeah. But, but channel, we got yeah. three PBS stations to choose from. Yeah, well, I like that one in Indiana best of all, all three of them. Yeah, especially you get Lawrence Road repeats on, on 56. And Comcast 17. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's what yeah, and some about. other it's 21, and, you know, and some anyway. But well, What really fascinated me was they found a, bl- a blacksmith that could redo all that iron work for them. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. It, those are it, really right a there vanishing in breed. Well, no, well, there's still a few hardy ones uh, uh, out yeah. there. You, another, another good show. It's not railroad related, but it's called the Craftsman's A Craftsman's Legacy, which has been running on Channel 20. Yes. And they look at different craftspeople. And uh, a friend of mine is a stone carver, and his program was supposed to run in January. It got preempted, but it will be on again in March. All right. And he's out in Elgin. Which reminds me, it's we're almost at the end here. Uh, Kraft Foods is opening up a plant in Israel. Call it Cheeses of Nazareth. <laughs> On that note, this is Jack Ryan giving you, <laughs> reminding you that, uh, uh, what was I reminding you? Oh, happy rails to you, Brian. John? Behave, John. Lightning's an area type weapon. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dang, All right. aboard! Next stop, Chicago Junction. As we come to the end of the line with today's show, join us again next time when we take our railroad of imagination on our continuing joy through the wonderful world of trains. Chicago Junction is a production of the Windy City Hometown Radio Network and can be heard on this station as well as the WindyCityHometown.com where recordings of all our shows may be heard. So once again, all aboard. This is your announcer, Brian Valu. Thank you for listening. Oh yeah, the conductor was portrayed by Charlie Johnson, a struggling young actor who really, really needs the work. Thank you and good night. You have been listening to Chicago Junction on Jack FM 89.7, WRHS FM Norge, and the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on Thursday, January the 29th, the year 2015. Chicago Junction is produced by Jack Ryan, directed by John DeVita. Our audio engineer is James Rohde, and radio station manager for WRHS-FM is Mr. Kevin Zeflick, and the executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network is Mr. John Seconda. This broadcast was pre-recorded on Wednesday, January the 28th. Until next time, please be safe and thanks for listening. And this is Jack FM 89.7, WRHS FM, Norwich, Illinois.